Hello everyone, Master Zeon 1001 here, and in this tutorial, um, which isn't a tutorial, I'm just going to be talking about my favorite add-ons that I use. Now, um, this is personally my list of add-ons as, um, you know, the ones I use the most or the ones I enjoy the most, not so much the best ones, but definitely the ones that if they weren't loaded I would notice pretty fast or, you know, whatever. Now, when it comes to add-ons, um, you know, Blender has kind of shifted, you know, add-ons used to be freely available, you know, you'd donate to get them built, and then they'd be added to the trunk and stuff like that, and then it'd just become a part of Blender, like, you know, B-surfaces. Um, you know, B-surfaces started off as something you'd buy, and then the money you spend into it would help improve it, but now we have a different system where, you know, people are selling add-ons, you know, they're promising to keep it updated however you know I don't see an end game on where it's gonna go once they hit you know some monetary goal so you know I'm kind of ranting at the beginning here but I just wanted to you know get that off my chest now another thing is um, <laughs> I was hanging out with some of my friends recently and I heard one of them say to the other well you know blenders cool um, but to do all the cool stuff you got to buy all the add-ons and so as a user, it immediately sent me into rage mode, you know, because, you know, when it comes to retopology and stuff like that, like I just do it. I just go in and I just start retopoing the mesh and, you know, I take in a plane, merge all the points and just turn on snap and it just gets to work. You know, I've done it so much. It's just muscle memory. But, you know, um, one of the reasons I always do that is to show people, hey, you can download Blender from Blender.org and immediately begin making great stuff, you know, and of course, you know, in the fine print, you gotta learn how to be artistic and, you know, all of that, but for the most part, you know, the general workflows I use can be used with Vanilla Blender and the add-ons that I try to showcase for y'all, I try to showcase things that y'all can obtain without having to pay anything. But, of course, you know, there's game-changing add-ons that are being developed. And, of course, this isn't anything against, you know, paid add-ons because I have literally bought all of them. And if not, it's because it's of no use to me or I just haven't got around to getting it yet. But, I mean, as a Blender fanatic, I, of course, am going to buy every add-on I can get my hands on, you know. So, you know, if you know me, um, <laughs> just write me about it. I'd be more than happy to tell you more about any of these add-ons, you know. But, um... I feel that the paid add-ons maybe came a little too soon for Blender's life, you know, because half the argument I hear from people trying to even consider converting is, it's not industry standards. Like, what industry are you going to work in, you know? I don't know what industry I'm going to work in. I don't know what industry I'd be working in if I mastered Maya, even, you know, to be honest. Like, I don't think <laughs> just because I've picked up Maya that they're suddenly going to hire me. I'm pretty sure... You know, it's down to, like, my art skills. And, you know, for the most part, most of the gigs I do are freelance. So, half the time, they never, ever mention what program was involved. And, I mean, if you were to tell them what program's involved, you'd probably just be wasting your breath. You know, to people that don't do 3D, 3D is completely uninteresting. But, you know, enough ranting, enough ranting. You know, I'm pretty sure y'all want to hear more about this model and see what's going on, you know, with that. But, you know, let's go ahead and jump in and begin. So, this model I'm just using it for... Uh, just our first example, uh, it was something I made last night, um, using Marvelous Designer and Blender, um, you know, combination of all my favorite tools, lattices, bull tools, you guess it, it's there, you know, um, even the text on the side, you know, text objects, um, but, you know, let's, um, go ahead and jump in and start with my top 11 favorite blender add-ons now do keep in mind this may turn into a lengthy video you know that's probably something you're used to coming over to my channel i'm always ranting on forever you know i'm also wanting to possibly look into maybe making like a podcast but i don't want it to be a podcast where i'm talking i want it to be a podcast where you know working and talking but you know let's jump in and start demonstrating some of these awesome add-ons all right now before we begin let me at least say hey if you made these add-ons 
kudos to you because you're awesome. Now, if you don't like your placement in the list, just know that it's kind of tentative. I just kind of built it on the fly. So, you know, not to say anyone is better than anyone except for the, the top one, two, and three. Those are definitely <laughs> where they have to be. But, you know, the first thing I want to show off is Sun Sky. Um, sun Position is um, an add-on I have for Blender. Let me uh, unhide the lights and hide the lights again. Here we go. Here's my sun. I was wondering where it was at. Now with this add-on, in case you don't know, add-ons are here. I'm also going to include the links at the end of this, but Sun Position is this one's particular name and it shows under the World Panel. Whenever you go here, it first looks like this until you enable it. You can choose to um, give it a sky texture, tell it to use an object, and you can also look at a map and kind of configure where you want um, your sun to be at. So. You know, we just jumped this into render mode with Shift Z um, and get rid of these panels. You can see that I got kind of a an overcast kind of, you know, dusky um, sunset happening here. Um, so if I bring up my map, I could look at the north. Um, and, you know, you see I got my lighting set up somewhere in Africa. You know, let's go ahead and put them in Austin, Texas. Not because that's where I'm at. It's just my favorite town. And we'll also... You know, do noon in the year 3000, you know, maybe, maybe not, you know, this is actually a new year coming up, so let's do 2015 and let's do um, 1800 hours because that's when I'm waking up, yeah, there we go, and maybe enable daylight savings, and we see that, you know, just through adjusting my time slider, on the fly, I can, um, you know, choose what time of day it looks like for the scene. So this is probably a horrible example. I probably should have brought up something more architectural. But, you know, just showing you real quick on the fly, that's what is going on. Now, in case you're wondering, I'm always using whatever version everyone's talking about. So in this case, I'm using uh, 2.73 built off the build bot on the 27th. Um, it's a bit unstable in my opinion. I opened it, it crashed a lot until I got it to uh, stabilize. But, you know, that is pretty much um, my quick explanation on the sun position add-on. So, all right, so the next um, add-on is the uh, pie menus um, and snapping pies in addition to sticky keys. These are all new features that have been uh, added to Blender, which I can't demonstrate all of them, but you know the pie menus, you know, press period, your pie pops out. Um, you press Z, you get a special pie menu, which I turned off. I also turned off the tab one. Now, if you're wanting to actually set up the pies or uh, adjust them, you can just type in pie and you can see all the short keys that uh, bring it, bring up pie menus. And I just um, turned off a lot of them because they were just um, irritating. Like I, I want to tab into edit mode. I want to tab into a menu on what I want to do, you know? So I think I got 11 and 10 mixed up, but uh, 11 is definitely the pie menu, snapping pie, sticky keys. I love it. However, you know, I, th I see a lot of people go overboard with it, like Wazoo's pie menu. It's like, I don't need a pie for every button on the keyboard. I just need pies when it's necessary that I would normally choose another option at that same time, or I may want to choose another option. But, you know, the sticky key implementation will make it where, you know, when you hold a key, it'll bring up a pie versus when you tap it it'll have a different function. So, you know, not a whole lot really to show on pie menus. I mean, I could jump over to layer five and, um, you know, Q, um, duplicate it. Now I like that shift S has the uh, origin to geometry as well as origin to cursor. I mean, I could come here, uh, snap this point here, shift S, uh, origin to cursor, and I'm done. Instead of pressing control, alt, shift C, I can just do it through the shift S menu since these two I, I feel are a bit connected. So, you know, that's pie menus in a nutshell. I'm not gonna bore you to death with that. Uh, number nine is text scrambler slash typewriter text. So I'm gonna bring in some font and wonder why it's not letting me uh, adjust these parameters here, whatever. You know, I'll deal with that later. I've been messing with Blender a bit today. So I'm just gonna go on my reference images and uh, find fonts. Try to find fonts, you know, make sure it's a bookmark here so I don't have to look for it again. This is probably my favorite font to come to. And so, you know, do a little self-promotion. Let's see. 
it is the new year at the time of this recording, so it'll be appropriate. Um, now, Typewriter Text and Text Scrambler are two that I believe were both made by Bassan uh, Kardali, who is um, you know the same person from Elephant's Dream and all that, a uh, big part of the Blender Institute and a um, big personal fan of his work and everything that he does. I mean, he did a uh, rigging tutorial for Blender Cookie I really want to get to where he's talking about um, making a custom rig UI, which is something I want to get into. So, Text Scrambler is an easy one. We'll go and choose this text, choose text scrambler. And for our source text, I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. And as you pull the progress up, you see that it scrambles it. So, you know, let's scramble it good. So here it's scrambled. I'll press I, I here. And then I'll uh, shift up arrow to jump 11 frames each time I do it. Bring it down to zero. And if I press E over the um, timeline, it'll, um, you know, set the end where I want. So let's turn on the high keys. And so, voila. That is a easy effect to set up and very useful in my opinion. Now the other one is typewriter text. You know, let's copy this text and it just won't work like that. This one requires a little bit more um, setup, but here we'll just uh, go here, shift up arrow and bring it out here. And bring it here and so basically we have the ability to make it type text in addition to um, you know doing the whole decrypting f phase you know and this is stuff that I use all the time you know messing with robots you know um, so it's definitely some fun times now like I said I'll put all the links to this in the um, in the uh, video now here we have a render of my robot. So this will bring us to uh, number eight, Cycle Blend Type, which is uh, another one of my favorite add-ons. The moment it dropped, I was blown away like, yes, yes, yes. So if we composite this thing, all I did was um, pretty much took it through a color correct, uh, blurred it, uh, used a little bit of lens distortion, and then used the uh, Z-Pass to composite it back over, making it look blurry in the background. Now, if I wanted to say experiment or something, I would, you know, go under color, uh, color balance, and we'll just, um, you know, connect this here and start a new adventure over here playing with this. And so we'll, uh, you know, we'll lean towards the green, you know, maybe a little, maybe a little on the orange, maybe lift it a ton, you know, shift to blue. All right, so you know we'll take this, and in addition to that, we also have this one. So if we were to take them and mix them together using this and this, you know we could see um, you know what the effects of it is just by holding shift and pressing minus and plus. We can just jump through the different passes. So I used to just have to click, 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 and literally finding the best one for me would take a bit long. I mean, you know, we come back down here. Let's uh, make it interesting. We'll um, connect a glare or something. Uh, here we go. So this video isn't about compositing. It's about add-ons. So, you know, forgive me um, for not, you know, going into the basics of this. Um, so here, this one is a bit of a pricey note. So it takes a moment to uh, go through. But if I lower that threshold, we'll get a bunch of pops. There we go, and maybe raise the fade so it, so it just explodes. Voila. So now we have these two uh, things being combined. Something slightly more interesting on the other side. And I could just press shift minus as well as shift plus until I find the right combination. 
and it's going to take a moment. So, you know, when it comes to the compositor, there still are some improvements that are to be had with it. However, Blender is, of course, aware and are going to be making those enhancements in the future. And then, you know, after I choose the right blend mode, which by now I just know, I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to screen that. Um, I just start playing with the uh, factor and, you know, there we go. And then, yeah, I just take this, plug it in here, and we look at our... Uh, full on result, you know, maybe a little bit more dispersion. So that is a uh, cycle blend type. Now um, we'll go over to layer six, where from here we're going to insert a cube, uh, jump back over to our default tab, and the earth sky thing is still. Um, showing north so let's turn that off because it's driving me crazy um you know let's say we're modeling you know usually i play this game called race to the end god and it's where i'll start modeling stuff you know usual um and then i end up doing something like this where i'm like you know i think i'm gonna put a slope there but when I do that, I lose my, my edge flow because of the way I did it. You know, there's a ton of other ways that I, I could do that. But, you know, I model like this pretty much where I just, you know, build my parts as I need them, as I see fit, uh, regardless of geometry. And then I correct it as I need to. Or, you know, if it's that important, I'll just model it right the first time. But either way, um, you know, retop on Blender is not a big deal, nor is it difficult. So when it comes to retopology, it's not, by the time I'm done complaining... I'm already done. You know, I'll spend time, I'll be hanging out with my friends. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I hate retopo. And then, you know, by the time I'm done complaining, I'm already done. So, you know, I built this quick little mesh here. And, um, you know, over here, there is the uh, lint checker, which will show you tries, in guns, non manifold elements, and interior faces. So, you know, you could take a tool like this, select lint. You know, if I was trying to export this, say, to Substance Painter, no matter what, I would just control T and then get it out of here. But you can't send out end guns, you know. Um, every time I do that to my friends, they make fun of me. <laughs> they're like, what the heck are these end guns, you know, because they're dealing with ZBrush and stuff that's, you know, more heavily quadded. But, you know, end guns are basically, uh, you know, hold the phone meshes. So it's just something you're um, experimenting. I mean, it's just something that you're experimenting with and just holding in place until you come back to it. So that is mesh lint, which was number seven. Number six is, you guessed it, F2. Now, F2 changed my life when it first came out, and it's still an add-on that, for one, I find difficult to explain, and for two, is infinitely awesome. So, you know, if that makes any sense, all I could do is demonstrate through a curve. So I'm just going to take a curve. I could have done polygons, but uh, I'm just going to convert to mesh, join them, and now we just have a whole bunch of polygons. Now, back in the day, I used to put an edge, put another edge, put another edge. Now, I didn't know better back in the day, but now, the now me would see the old me and be like, you should sue the foundation for making you have to click so many times to do that kind of stuff. But with F2, where you, wherever your mouse cursor is, you will predictively fill faces with F as you press it subsequently, making this step a lot quicker. So, I mean, I literally will um, sometimes just model using only splines. Uh, let's see, we'll um, clear that out. You know like so and you know I could be using loop tools bridge and you know all sorts of different things by now you know the tool set is getting in insane um, you know grease pens like I probably am gonna just keep ranting after this video and sh show you all uh, fracture stuff and um, some stuff with the grease pencil because I'm just so amazed you know um, the tools are are getting better faster than I'm getting better which is great I hate hitting my limits, but I mean, you know, F2 is something that before it came out, I never would have imagined it, and it's the most useful thing you never would have thought you needed. 
So the other thing is, let's talk about, uh, we'll go back to default, we'll go back to camera one, and here I'm just gonna reopen this scene, and here we go, we got them all set up. Now, Node Wrangler is number five, and basically this add-on is another one that has blown my pants off, made by Greg Zoll, I believe, and the only add-on that I find to be more impressive is his other add-on that I'll be going over later. Um, so, right now I'm just doing a quick render. With the Node Wrangler add-on, it adds all sorts of functionality. You can see, I believe, right here. I'm not going to go over all the features of what they do, but I'll show you pretty much what I use it for. And that is this. the viewer node. With the viewer node, you can literally composite in the viewport with the real-time render as if you were dealing with another um, famous application that I won't mention by name. But basically, being able to see this stuff in real-time while you're working, just, just unreal. Just unreal, in my opinion. Like, when this came out and I discovered what it did, like, um, here, I'll bring in a condition Fresno. Now, another thing is, um, you know, the BY note pack. I don't know if you all know what it is, but if you don't, you should look up what it is and have it and learn it and have all those node groups because making materials is definitely a lot easier and quicker for me now than it was. And, um, you know, I spend more time now working on other stuff instead of, um, you know, building all these complex node groups every dang time. For what reason? No reason. Like, for <laughs> for empty satisfaction, I guess, you know. So, basically, I'm mixing these two together. And that gives me this, which I will, uh, you know, use a color wrap. And the thing is, is it's rendering in the viewport, and I'm looking at it in the viewport, and I'm literally able to do this all in a viewport. Just game changer. So I'm going to bring in another group. Uh, where's the uh, metal? There we go. Let's see. Maybe this one. Yeah. So here's our, our shader, you know, for this metal, just for now. And all we're gonna do is just use an RGB curve to mix between these two, but because of the functionality added by the Node Wrangler, I am able to very easily Ah, uh, silly me, silly me. Sorry about that guys. Mix shader, mix node. Where am I in the compositor? So now we have, you know, damaged metal, maybe. I don't think so, you know. Let's, um, let's mute this and go back. And notice that every time I control shift click on this, the viewer just disappears, just disappears. Like I'm hoping I'm doing it justice. Now for these add-ons, you know, like I said, that's just my top 10 list. So, I mean, I'm sure there's much better videos available. So now, we can start bringing in some of this paint, you know. Maybe raise the scale a bit. Maybe something like that. And now if we look at it, you know, we have chipped robot with, you know, just a little bit of red. I mean, just a little bit of red, you know, creeping through like splatter. And so this is a horrible example, but you get the idea. So that brings us on to the next one. So for this, I'm going to start out with a default scene. And this one is a paid add-on called Render Plus, one of my favorite add-ons. And the reason that is, is because it gives me a ding when I render. It sounds small and <laughs> kind of big to me. You know, I'll, I'll 
the the way it happens now is I also now have a PS4 um, as a result of another gig I completed, but basically um, I set it where if I'm rendering, I can play PS4. Like that's my goal. So every day I have to work. I'm like, all right, I'll I'll get this done. So it's rendering, and then I'll just play PS4. And then if someone's like, hey, why are you playing video games? I'm like, well, you know, my computer's locked up. You know, I got another computer in the living room. That's beyond the point. But the fact of the matter is, is it allows me to feel less guilty about playing Call of Duty. If you want to add me, F I N A L E X is my PSN name, Finale X. So let's talk about Render Plus. Um, it's not really a big add-on, but it allows you to auto-save image layers, render all layers in the scene, change the slot, in addition to giving you a sound and turning off your computer when it's done rendering. Which, personally, I am still afraid that my computer is going to explode if I'm not watching it render. I don't know if y'all go through that same issue, but me personally, I cannot leave my house with my computer rendering. I see all these pictures online of people and they're computer tables exploding and it's, you know I don't want that to happen to this computer but let me tell you the story of how I've obtained all of the computers I've obtained in my CG journey is both a strange and interesting one but let me tell you I am poor so buying equipment is definitely out of the question the only way I'll ever get anything is by working for it you know but you know that's all beyond the point <laughs> sorry I kind of went on a rant there um, but all I have to do is just hit a 12 There's no ding. There is no ding. You know, let's find out why there's no ding. I have wonders here. I'm being wild. Alright, let's try it again. So we'll go here. And... There we go. Now we'll try rendering again. My heart is broken. I should have prepared for that. Um, but you get the idea. Just expect there to be a ding, 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 ding. And for that, this one is one of my favorite add-ons. Now, this one probably should have been way further down the list because I'd never use it. But auto being a, automatically changing slots is very important to me because I render all the time, and my renders just um, my renders just override each other. And I'm like, uh, maybe I want to compare it to the old one. Maybe I want to see what full GI looks like with limited GI. And, you know, I compare them, and I forget. You know, because there's so many buttons you have to click in 3D. You know, I was trying to convince my girlfriend to uh, try out Blender and, you know, it's just too many buttons. Uh, I just don't <laughs> think she'll get into it. But, you know, um, that's enough on, on Render Plus. Um, the next thing is quick preferences. So, you know, I'm actually going to open this bot up one more time just to show uh, real nice what it looks like. Now, Blender has had some viewport improvements, like uh, I believe... Um, AO is um, now in the viewport. Depth of field is now in the viewport. I don't have it in my particular build because uh, I'm not using the goose bump right now or gooseberry. But, you know, basically quick preferences will allow you to um, real quick change your overall look of the scene. Now, I used to use mat caps, but I have found that uh, because they have the specular behavior of cycles now and um, just something with the way the OpenGL looks, they look slightly better than Matt Cap. So you'll always see me on dark gray or candy because default is atrocious if you work in dark gray for a little bit, let me tell you. And I mean, you can come here, add additional lights. And just go to town go to town on it and because of that this one is number three because I personally feel that this add-on single-handedly improved my sculpting game just by helping me see my meshes just a little bit more efficiently so um, 
that will cover um, uh, quick preferences just in a nutshell. So now on to the next one. All right, so now we're in the uh, latter half of this list. So let me bring it back up. And now we'll go over uh, number two, Easy Lattice Creator. Easy Lattice Creator is definitely another add-on that has changed my life. In fact, um, as you'll find out pretty soon, I am a big lover of the lattice. Um, let's take a quick example. Let's say I wanted to um, add an element, you know to um, this character. Well, one way is to, um, you know, bend it using a simple to form, using a curve, you know, there's so many choices. But in this case, we are gonna choose the lattice because, well, it's the winner. So, you know, lattices, you know, if any developers are watching this, if you add lattice sculpting, I will go insane. Let me just say that, you know, I dream of it at night, to be honest. You know, if they add lattice sculpting, I will be set. Like, y'all, I will do series about lattice sculpting if I have lattice sculpting. But it's important. And, you know, that's mainly because, you know, I use lattices to shorten the work. You know, I can model complex things and bend them using um, simplified movement. So, you know, I'm just going to just assign some random mats. And this is pretty much, you know, how I, how I work is, um, I just put the mats in and then um, yeah, I may go on Substance Painter and do some fine tuning or uh, paint through Blender's texture painting, which I'm falling back in love with again. But, you know, either way, no matter what program you use, just make sure you're good at it. If you're not getting good results out of your program, you know, then maybe look around. But don't blame Blender. Um, so normally I would put in a lattice like so, and it would be all good, but I'm showing you the easy lattice. So we'll scale, apply rotation. All I have to do is tap into edit mode, type in easy, and now I have a lattice custom fit for this part. Now, an honorable mention is to let you know that there's an add-on that I use personally. If you went and got the ratch, you already have it, but it's the mirror mirror where you select one object, select the other object, press a uh, alt shift X and it'll mirror it or um, uh, Y or Z, but you can mirror it on all those axes, axes. And it's built by uh, Robert Fornhoff, who is um, a good friend of mine, a uh, programmer who is um, helping me improve some of the functionality in my day-to-day -day life of using Blender. Um, now, this is also a uh, call out to, you know, any coders, you know, if y'all are looking for some ideas on things that are needed, let me tell you, I have a whole slew of them. I've gotten to the point now where um, when I open a new file, I will just um, have an extra tech, text document open where I can um, just jot down ideas on the fly as it comes to me, uh, just workflow related enhancements I would appreciate so you know with this easy lattice it's simple work and then I can just you know hit outside you know roll it which is where I just add more spins and then you know uh, go back into only render and that's it for now you know just a just a quick idea of um, just how I would use the quick lattice now this thing is built entirely using uh, the bull tool but you know we're gonna make a, a whole new scene and talk about number one Clunglamo mother effing softworks these people made the bull tool they made the bake tool they made the motion tool and I effing love these guys now personally I wish the motion tool would just be implemented with blender or else they're going to have to compete with Chevrochalk for the honor, which will make me mad because I'll have to relearn a bunch of info. But um, let me just show you just real quick. Um, now, I'm sure all of y'all have seen the motion tool. Um, in fact, let me... Um, 
let me uh, find a robot that um, will work out for us. So, um, you know, I'm going to go into 30 day challenge folder. And, um, you know, this is something I did not plan out. So, all right. So, you know, random creation. Let's do it the. Hmm. He upgraded. <laughs> he was originally a <laughs> walking creature. Um, all right. Uh, let's try it again. Uh, control O. Um, we'll take this guy. He's a fine example. And we'll uh, shift C copy him and make a new scene and drop them. Yeah, I love copy and paste. That's not a plugin or an add-on, but it is a feature that when Blender added it, I was, I'm telling you, everything they do um, impresses me to no end. It's just magic. So I'm just gonna separate everything by loose parts and uh, tab out of edit mode, select everything and shift S and use my uh, power snapping and choose origin to geometry. Now everything has an origin in the right place. So I'm just going to control G and group it all. Um, and under motion tool, uh, we can set diagram. Now I'm not very familiar with the motion tool. So this is a no means a tutorial on it. I'm just kind of demonstrating how I, um, you know, handle it. So, you know, we'll uh, set the diagram to be MT, MT. And that's has its diagram set. Um, also, we have to go over here. This is something I'm sure they'll be fixing in a future update. But you have to make a group here. And then I think over here, you have to click a button and uh, choose group. And um, you know, I'm pretty sure everything is now affected by it. So if that's the case, then... Um, you know, let's shade it all flat too, so that way I don't have to use any sub D and it works as fast as possible. Um, you know, we're just gonna go here and just create a flow control. So, you know, oh yeah, I also forgot to set um, set an axis. So, you know, if uh, any of the conglomo people are watching um, or if Victor Fabio, you know, I'm pretty sure he's all of it. Um, there's a lot of buttons you have to click for this. Um, like I've been meaning to get to get to you about a, a review on this um, because I've been immensely um, pleased with it since I got it. But um, you know, always improvements, always improvements. You know, Blender hopefully uh, we'll be getting a viewport um, update here very soon. But you know, we're not going to talk about that. Um, so right here, um, you know, we just connect these nodes and they they will chain each other. So, here we go. So we want to start at one, end at zero. It seems I've done something horrible here. Hold on, uh, one moment, let me, you know, instead of pausing it, instead of pausing it and um, just doing it all, I'm actually going to do this again. Um, this was a tool I was probably supposed to uh, practice with, you know, before doing all this, but I didn't. Also, my house is getting hot. All right. Uh, separate by loose parts. Let's turn off the heater so I don't die. Maybe put on the AC. All right. So we'll select this, um, you know, origin to geometry. Um, under motion tool, we'll uh... Oh, yeah. Got to make a graph to have a graph. See, and it's just some, some strange things, you know. I'm pretty sure V-Ray and Blender are having a harder time, which is another add-on I should probably go over. But I've been um, actually working on that to... Um... All right. All right. 
uh, origin to geometry. I didn't want to <laughs> remove their location. All right, so everything's set. Um, we'll choose to make it all a group. I think you do it like this, and then. And so y'all are watching me, you know, figure this out, you know, on the fly in real time. Um, you know, it, everything looks great when you when you speed it up, though. You know, if I was if I was doing a time lapse, I wouldn't even know what the heck I was doing. All right, so set the diagram, set initial parameters, axis uh, for group. We'll um, give it a random inset, I mean a random index based off of the Z. So now we're ready to begin. So. You know, for this, I can just, um, you know, put a begin, um, tie that to a delay of one group sequence, delay, and now, let me make sure I set their initial parameters, I don't want any weirdness, alright, and, you know, from here, we can uh, animate the position, so let's say we wanted to um, animate their position, And we can even change the, the, the way that the curve reacts. So, um, you know, we give that 30. And then we say, in addition to that, we also want to scale it to zero. Um, so the end scale is one. I mean, the start scale is one and the end scale is zero. And um, we'll set it to 20. So now you can kind of see what's going on here. And so... You know, we can even connect more nodes to this, and it just gets crazy. It just gets crazy. In fact, this, out of all the uh, add-ons, this one's probably my the one I'm least excited about. But um, that's only because it's still in its uh, infancy, and I see a lot of competing competing apps. Like it's like the moment I bought this add-on, I discovered Severchalk and all this other stuff that um, has been trying to do the same thing. Um, So we have that, so I can, you know, connect this back and, um, you know, in rotation that, you know, we'll uh, bring out the scale. And so we want to bring the scale from here, start scale, or actually the out scale will be the start scale. We'll just set this to go back to one. And let's see, maybe it's this one. So now we have this, um, you know, robot just turning over. And um, we could play with all sorts of, um, you know, options here. Like I'll, um, you know, just set some of their rotations to be more dramatic. So it's like, pew, 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 pew. and just craziness. And that's just, you know, uh, just a motion tool. For some reason, someone's messaging the heck out of me. Let me see what it says. All right, it's my girlfriend. So, one moment while I check on. All right, I'm back. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. So, where was I? Oh yeah, I'm demonstrating the motion tool. Uh, I'm telling y'all that it's still a great tool, especially for motion graphics. Like I've played with in a lot of examples, just uh, messing with stuff like you know, like sci-fi dials. Like I mean. When I figure it out deep enough, it will be made into like an entire, you know, robotic UI. But, um, you know, while we're on the topic of number one, let's talk about the bake tool. But, you know, before that, let's talk about the bull tool. Now, the bull tool single-handedly changed my workflow. I mean, from the moment it came out, um, I've been blown away. I've been so impressed with the tool. Um, it is probably the greatest, single greatest add-on I've ever used and it sounds strange I know because it's really not that big of a deal but you know just to demonstrate in case y'all haven't seen my 800 volumes of bull tooling you know where I really explained that I love bull tool more than a friend um, so I'm just beveling and um, making random pieces but you'll see the uh, 
answer to why this all is in just a moment. And, you know, for most of this, there's not really a lot of narration to be had. It's just extrude alt S. You know, you see my keys, you see my keys. You know, don't cover beginner stuff anymore. You know, like, I, think I, I think I mentioned it previously. You know, I want my channel to grow with me. So as I become a better artist, I want to make better tutorials for people that are also becoming better. You know, we're all trying to get better, you know. So I'm going to just create three quick mats, you know, um, we'll just call this a uh, BLDG, uh, uh, maybe BLDG, spell it right, um, there's a G in BLDG, um, window, uh, rel, so we'll just give this uh, just a gray, you know, we'll copy and paste the color there make this uh, blue and we'll uh, copy and paste the color there and we'll make this like uh, some cream color and we will um, copy and paste that color there so now we basically have our, our window here now this is um, you know me demonstrating the bull tool uh, just on the fly here um, yeah I probably should have prepared some examples but you know, you know me like to roll with the punches so you know we're going to create another one and uh, call it a side two and um, you know I just cannot type for the life of me today um, and you know make it dark dark I mean it's not gonna be it's just gonna be dark in the viewport but you know here we are side two now another thing is uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, UV it and unwrap now there's all sorts of add-ons I, I could be showing um, especially when it comes to UVing stuff but you know this will work um, so we have that now let's also uh, take our time and um, just give this a, a quick uh, Chinese box unwrap There we go. So a nice little quick unwrap there. Um, also, you know, you know, we won't, we'll, we'll come back to that. So the thing is, I could take this shape and control minus. And you know, if, you're, if this is something you're interested in seeing more about, um, I'm actually doing an entire course on um, some environment creation using this. That's uh, going to be DLC for the wretch. Now, notice that by linking the materials, I have basically bold. A material object into another object and I can you know use the mirror mirror and mirror it I can select the other side and mirror it over there and you know we got the start of a house and I could take this shape and still give it the business let me tell you like we will uh, come right here take this bring it out uh, scale it down you know grab more scale it down bring it up we will give it the uh, side two and now we got some you know rails happening and um or you know window sills so let's actually undo that and maybe do it like this and now give it side two so you know, now we have this building, right? But here's what's cool. We unwrapped it. Let's duplicate it. And I'm just going to Alt-C, you know, move it to layer two. It's bold to surprise. Tab. Lo and behold. Horrible things have happened. But that's okay. Because, well, UVing it is nothing. Um, you know, unwrap. Maybe, um... We'll just do uh, project from view, H, go over to this side, uh, shift G, normal, U, 
project from view, H, this, shift G, normal, um, maybe not. <laughs> All right, you know, we'll select these pieces and, um, you know, U to unwrap, H, and, um, you know, finally for these back pieces, you know, we'll just select them, U to unwrap, H to hide, and, you know, that leaves us just these windows. Now, I was trying to show how you could literally bowl UVs into other meshes, but it looks like that, now, it's something that's kind of unstable, too, so, you know, I was halfway expecting it to work because I was going to get lucky, but it looks like it did not keep the UVs, but it did keep the materials, which is still, um, you know, a large amount of work um, being done for me. And, I mean, we could take these windows now and unwrap, uh, maybe um, smart UV project, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, we'll just take this last stuff and um, you know, unwrap. And, you know, I'm just making some really quick kind of nasty UVs. I mean, I could literally go under here and use this tool to grid by shape and, um, you know, on certain pieces that are able to be gridded, you know, actually even all that out. So um, let's change this over to the um, Blender render and we'll just give it some quick UVs and see what they look like. So, you know, here's my UVs. So, you know, with the bull tool, I'm able to really quickly make this object and uh, we'll go back over to the cycles engine and we're gonna put a sun in the scene and render it out. And you know, that's about uh, what I got so far. So with the bake tool, I can go here, choose I wanna do a combined pass of 1024, 1024, uh, 64 samples. And um, we'll choose that as the bake object. So I'm gonna choose bake. And if we're lucky, we have our passes here. But this is the part where things get kind of weird um, with this add-on. So to be honest, you know, this add-on's really not that bad. However, um, I do personally feel that uh, it's not quite there yet on... Um, being completely able to just be thrown into my workflow I mean you gotta be gotta be solid and work predictably I mean we look over here it doesn't even show anything but believe me there's probably some image textures generated here I mean to work even easier we'll just go to the original bake and we'll just choose combine and it says that we don't have an image so we'll just go into node editor we'll just choose this and throw that in there throw this in there and chances are is this is probably part of the issue now blender is going through a lot of updates so I would expect these things to happen um, personally um, so we bake it again. Still nothing. So, you know, just cast that tool off. Maybe, maybe it'll be fixing that. So now, you know, I have my render baked out. And that's all it took. And, you know, I could go from here and start um, painting or doing what I do uh, or taking a Photoshop and going to town on it or in doing, de doing, undoing, just all sorts of... Uh, crazy stuff but you know the bull tool is still my number one favorite um you know but the whole conglomo family is my number one so now let's talk about some of the add-ons that um that i that i have that are not free that um i bought you know there's just to kind of just show some stuff that maybe you haven't seen so um you know the conglomo uh motion tool i think is like fifty dollars or something um, one is the fast scale. Fast scale is one that, uh, I thought had a lot of, um, potential, especially 
being a sort of sort of like a um, in fact I don't even have it enable here we go so every time I enable add-on I click save user settings so it remembers it um, this one is one that you can buy for like five dollars so if I click on it I can put a circle here and literally scale it like so which this is a horrible example but there's some uses for it um, render plus is one that we already covered uh, UV squares is another one worth covering so let me show you that one real quick All right, so let's say I have this shape, you know, let's say it's not a cube, let's say it's something cooler than a cube. I mean, I should probably use a more complex example, but, um, you know, for the sake of time, let's just keep it simple. So, you know, I'll just cut some slices in here. Um, you know, keeping it quad though. And we'll see. Subdivide, subdivide. Now, if I press U and unwrap this, it'll put it over here like so. But let's say that this mesh, you know, I wanted to, what is it, space? <laughs> Maybe not. All right, let's just not even think about that. Um, let's go back over here. Now, right now you see that everything is uneven. You know, back in the day I used to press SX and grab other ones and then, you know, shift R, shift R, shift R, shift R, shift R. I would shift R until I'm R tardin. You know, all day, every day. Just be <laughs> repeating, you know. But with this, now I'm able to grid by shape and it'll just automatically grid it for me. That's worth 10 bucks, let me tell you. Especially if you're working in a you know, game assets and stuff like that, which is majority of uh, my stuff is down packing and getting stuff uh, set up. Um, another one, now this one deserves to be on the list, but I didn't place it because it was paid and I wanted to try to minimize the amount of paid add-ons in order to make this a, uh... now the, another thing is the reason I made this video is um, <laughs> I saw someone make a, uh, you know, I think it was Rayante actually, Rayante Martinez or yeah, he made a list of favorite Blender add-ons. And number one at the top of this epic list was images as planes. Now, if you're importing so many images as planes that that's your favorite add-on, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. That's all I can say. So I'm just making some little grass. You know, why not? So here we go. You got some grass. You know, maybe maybe we want like a, a straight one too. You know. Now there's also tons of ways to do what I'm about to show you. In fact, using particle hair, which is how I did it last time I was doing this as a demo. But I just want to show off what asset sketcher is. So we'll just uh, apply the location on all this stuff. And, um, you know, location, uh, scale, you know, we'll move it over. So this is our, our grass objects. And under asset sketcher, I can, um, you know, add object to list. You know, maybe it should add all the dang objects to the list. Let's try again. We'll add that. We'll add that. We'll add that. And we'll add that. And I'm pretty sure next time that I'm talking to you about this, this won't even be a problem. So, um, now we can take, say, a sphere, and um, we want to make this object a canvas. And raise the brush density, and um, so you have to be in perspective. Now this one isn't working. It better be working, there we go. 
Yeah, for these paid add-ons, you know, the big advantage of buying them is that I expect that they work. They better work. Man, I hope they work. And I expect them to work. Because, you know, there's a couple of um, honorable mentions, too. Um, like, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, poly strips, But, you know, for something like this, being able to paint in your assets, let me tell you, buy this. Go and buy it. You know, if you're using Blender, buy it. You know, if you're not using Blender, you know, why are you watching my video? But, you know, if you're using Blender, you probably need this add-on because it is amazing. I mean, I've been experimenting with different uses for it. You know, if you're wondering where I've been at, you know, always in the shadows working on the next level of techniques. But, I mean, now, paint it with the quickness. And so, you know, that's awesome and all. So, you know, let's um, make a new file. So, yeah, next one is uh, under retopology. There has been some insane retopology enhancements done by uh, Ice De La Lloyd and um, I, Ian Lloyd De La Cruz, I mean, and uh, Cedric La Pillar, um, in addition to, of course, Jonathan Williamson and people at CG Cookie, you know, everywhere. There are enhancements coming to retopology. Now, this is something I came across just this morning. But, you know, back in the day, I used to actually insert a plane, press tab, collapse all the points, click on the magnet, change it to face, change it to snapping, and start, you know, making my surface. Then I'd come out and I'd have to put a mirror mod, you know, use quick mirror to do that. And then I would get to work. But well, let's start that over again. Because that's a lot of buttons, and I'll admit, if there's a lot of buttons being used and someone makes a way to reduce them, that's something you need to integrate into your workflow. So with that, I'm going to click Set Up Retopo Mesh. Now, I have Retopo already set up. Now this add-on goes so much deeper. Um, in fact, I'm not going to discuss retopology immensely today because, you know, I don't want to bore you to sleep. Plus, the people that are doing it, their tools are working. I'm using 2.73, which has new grease pencil changes. may not be working the way it's supposed to, but um, being able to do this on the fly and have options to uh you know my favorite is right here uh here i'll show you we'll um just we'll just do some uh filling you know it's also showing the other side so i mean i could uh turn x-ray off um we'll just extrude this in grid fill voila now, with this same mesh, I can now choose Lap Relax, and this is game-changing. I mean, not game-changing how it collapsed into the mesh, but um, when it works right, it literally is... Hmm. It's just not... That's why I didn't even want to demonstrate this today, but just know that eventually you'll have a button you can click that'll relax your mesh while still shrink wrapping without a reproject with me without a uh, shrink wrap modifier now um, contour is definitely worth the money i'm so glad i bought it i've used it on so many game gigs that it immediately paid for itself after one um but it's used everywhere everywhere i mean i will take a hose and uh build it with curves you know, let's just let's just make this a hose. You know, all right. So here we go. We have this curve. Now think about it. Is there's 36 spans in here? So I mean, I will you know make it a mesh. Come down here, hit draw contours, and it'll crash a bunch. Which is why contours isn't on the list right now. Like it's just not working right now until I probably buy Retopo Flow, which brings me to another thing about add-ons, you know, their names changing and packages changing and yeah, you know, I yeah, you know, I'm not gonna rant because I don't want to start a war on it, but you know, I have my my personal views on it. Like I at least think there should be free versions of all this stuff for people that are learning and like me trying to master an application. 
Um, so honorable mentions is contours and poly strips. Also is um, texture atlas. I love texture atlas. Let me tell you, like texture atlas is unreal. Um, being able to, here we'll just take this object. Actually, let's just make a new file. Here I'll show you texture atlas. Um, We'll just unwrap this cube. This cube has uh, been good to us today. And we, um, you unwrap. And over here, we have our image editor. Now, if I duplicate this a bunch, back in the day, I used to just merge everything and then Control A, Control P. Now, what you can do is uh, keep your object separate, select one, uh, I guess, maybe, maybe not, you don't have to do that last part, but whatever. Um, and under Texture Atlas, you can give it a Texture Atlas. You can go and choose uh, to start manual unwrap, which will make them all one, allowing you to deal with your UVs, finish manual unwrap. Each of these now have unique places on the board and I could bake them all together so in my opinion very very useful another one is the Sketchfab exporter now I'm a big fan of Sketchfab and the fact that they built a one button solution to um, you know export to Sketchfab is just amazing um, in fact you know, I'll bring up my web page on there real quick because I'm such a big fan. And, you know, you can take your model just straight from the Blender viewport and upload it straight to the site and it'll take your materials and all that stuff. Uh, I don't know about the textures. Usually I just kind of do it manually because I have to put the images individually to place them. But you know, you have it just right here. And so when it comes to getting your API key, you can just go over to Sketchfab and on your profile, uh, get your API key and you can start exporting straight from here. One button, bam, it's on a website where you set it up, make it look pretty, show your friends, earn respect, you know. So that's the uh, Sketchfab exporter. The other one is the Go Z uh, or Go B. Go B for Blender is uh, something that I use sometimes, but um, the last version I have is the 2.68 version, and basically it allows me to send meshes straight from here to ZBrush, in addition to take them back to Blender from ZBrush with just one button. I don't use it a whole lot. It's kind of unstable. Also, I find myself overriding subtools that I'm currently working on and I'm forgetting about, you know, go figure. Um, also screencast keys. This is the key that has, I mean, this is the add-on that has made me who I am. You know, I've used it in all my tutorials. It's used in every tutorial. It's a great add-on, never crashes. Uh, doesn't give me a whole lot of fuss, collapsible menu. Uh, it's, you know, there was that one time I was animating it to, uh, keep jumping back and forth. You remember that, um, nobody liked it, but you know, that's the screencast keys. Um, now, another honorable mention that's worth talking about is the um, the Gaffer plugin. So, let me uh, bring up the Ratch. And I'm going to pause for one moment so I can use the restroom. Oh man, so I didn't know I was muted. All right, so in this final part, we're going to be talking about um, we're going to be talking about Gaffer, which is um, one of my favorite add-ons that kind of crept up on me, and I fell in love with it overnight. Overnight, meaning I fell in love with it last night. 
Um, now this particular add-on is used for managing your lighting for a more efficient scene. Now before when I bought it, I bought it only because I love Greg Zoll and his work and what he does and his blog, Adaptive Samples, which you should check out sometime if it's still around. But um, basically um, it was an add-on to manage light. Now personally I have just fired light at things, played with their levels till it looked good, um, and then just call it a day. Well, now, after learning about linearization, linear workflows, and exposure, and ISOs, now I see light a little bit differently. You know, maybe things aren't dark because there's not enough light. Maybe it's not dark because there's not enough exposure. Maybe my ISO is too low. Maybe it's too high. Maybe I need to lower my f-stop to get more light into the camera and things like that. So that's about how I've been thinking about things now. So back to... Um, the topic at hand. So I was watching this tutorial, Efficient Cinematic Lighting in Maya and uh, Middle Ray and V-Ray by Nomon. And it was just a phenomenal video. I mean, I watched it on repeat all day. And uh, my boss was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to watch it till I memorize it. And I've been memorizing it. Um, but, you know, a big thing that they're talking about was managing your lighting to be not only efficient, but also um, have the right values where you want that have gradation where you want it. Now, this isn't by no means um, an efficiently, perfectly awesome lit scene, but it's just a test that I was doing yesterday to uh, gear up for the Wretch Volume 2, which is uh, coming soon. So, I mean, if you haven't seen it or you know what it is, um, I would check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the render view. Uh, ignore all this. This is just a shader network. I just kind of hacked a shader together um, for this uh, based off the Wretch and his maps. But... Basically, with this add-on, you can list all of your lights in one panel. You can control their levels all in one panel. You can turn on their multi-important sampling, shadow, diffuse, and specular contributions all in one panel. You can show their radius, show their name. You can make them aim at the cursor. There's all sorts of amazing things you can do, but what I like is light local mode, which is what you should call this. But basically, it hides all the lights except one, allowing you to fine-tune them individually and then recontribute them to the scene so this is our you know the final render but you know I could go through each level of the lighting and see what happens now the goal with this one was to get the twinkle in his eye uh, my girlfriend was watching me render it yesterday she's like what is um, what is that pixel in the eye I'm like that is the pixel of life because by having a light reflect inside the eye you know it helps it look a little more lively but you know, I could go through each level of my lighting. Now, this one is actually a rim light on the other side coming through. Um, also, I have SSS on, which is probably making it render a bit slower. Let's see, now it'll uh, come through. Um, and I could just tweak these lights individually. So, after seeing him um, and Maya play with the light linker and, and uh, modify parameters individually, that's when it hit me someone fixed this problem already someone fixed a problem that i haven't even become intelligent enough to understand that i have yet and you know it all started really when one of my friends was telling me the other day he's like you know i'd like to see you lie to see properly and so my response was the hell does that mean but so i've just been studying lighting so enough of the backstory um you know we go to the world alone we see its contribution and you know from here we can make decisions like um, maybe in fact I don't even have to go all the way to that panel we can go here and uh, we'll just give it like a maybe a 0.7 and change it to reflect only maybe, um, maybe 1.7 in fact we can change this map altogether but you know we're not gonna do that we're just gonna contribute only to his reflection and if I turn off light only local mode and we render it out, you know, turn off the camera, we can see everything working together at once. And so, you know, this isn't the best example, I imagine, but it's just one that I had at hand. You know, there's a, another one I probably shouldn't show you all yet, but, you know, let's, uh, let's take a look at it. So here is a uh, dry run of the wretch. Um, I took a quick crack at uh, putting armor on it just to play with the idea. Um, 
you know, I'm not going to go into any of the techniques, but I'm just letting you know, um, it's going to be phenomenal. I mean, if you're wondering how I've been doing all my cloth and Marvelous Designer, you should definitely get the wretch because the uh, addendum that's coming very soon is also going to um, have a segment about Marvelous Designer, hopefully. But we'll mainly be covering uh, my workflow of working in Blender as well as my friend's workflow of working with me in their respective programs because, you know, when it's all part of a pipeline, um, it's, it's, it, you just got to uh, practice it a bit. But eventually you'll, you'll have your pipeline down. So mine is strictly, I mean, pretty much um, ZBrush, Maya, Blender, um, Marvelous, ZBrush, you know, and then rendering a Blender, Keyshot, V-Ray, or whatever I feel like. So for this, you know, I also set up a... Uh, lighting scene and so the head is too dark see it already and it's because we have that SSS that'll uh, take a bit to clean up there we go so with this I'm able to um, literally turn off lights that I deem not needed for this one I'll turn off the world So here we are without the world, and we see we have the sun uh, shining through like um, like a gobo to uh, add to the scene. Now, if I wanted to say add more blue, or you know um, maybe brighten it more from the top, like I could come here and just be like 0.5, and now I have more light coming down from the top, and we can even uh, go into light local and see just individually what this light is contributing to the scene. And then I can uh, come out of light local, go over to another light. In fact, make this full screen blender. In fact, it's um, processing a little bit slow, but you know, whatever. It's a lot to process. So, you know, with the sun, maybe we want that around uh, 0.7. And this one so we see that this one is giving it a, um, like a orange glow and uh, its contribution is you know let's uh, make it 600 there we go and you know also we can make it where it only affects the diffuse contribution so now let's come out of this light local and look at this one now this light I feel may not be positioned effectively so um, and this is just me personally you know if you have other opinions about lighting you know or tutorials you recommend you know do let me know it's always I'm always uh, in, the, in the course of improvement you know my name is master Zeon online but really it's from like when I used to play video games, not anything about being a master, even though people always give me jokes about it. It's like, you know, maybe I just need a new, different, a new name for 3D. But, um, you know, for this, we might raise this uh, contribution to 400. Uh, see what we got here. You know, I like what it's doing on the specular. Um, I think it's useless on the diffuse, though. So there we go. So let's come out of light local mode, re enabling everything. And turning off the world, um, turning off the world, yeah, we don't want that world. And now we have kind of a, a more autumn scene happening here, and I think that the, the lighting is a little bit more um, agreeable for this. But overall, the picture is still too dark. So, I mean, in Blender, you know, there's a couple things we do. We start brightening lights. Believe me, we could do that. But instead, we're going to come here. And just pull the exposure and um, maybe not so much let's see we'll give it a gamma of one and we could just play with some film presets um, which is also one of my favorite things that I do um, at the end of my renders you know I'll play with my gamma a bit um, you know and just get my levels right 
And this is stuff that doesn't start your render over, which is another thing. I can't wait till they update a Blender. Uh, there's sometimes I, I move a node, it'll just start re-rendering, drives me crazy. But no big deal. Um, that's it. So, you know, it seems like I talked about Gaffer for a bit. Uh, I'm just checking to make sure there's no other add-ons I was meaning to cover. And so that pretty much covers it. So, you know, in order, my favorite add-ons is Bull Tool, Bake Tool, Motion Tool, number one. Uh, number two, Easy Lattice Creator. Number three, Quick Preferences. Number four, Render Plus. Number five, Road Wrangler. Number six, F2. Number seven, Mesh Lint. Number eight, Cycle Blend Type. Number nine, Text Scrambler slash Text Writer Text. I mean, slash Typewriter Text. Number 10 is Sun Position, and 11 is the Pie Menu, Snapping Pies, and Sticky Keys. Now, I'll try to include uh, links to all of these add-ons in the end, just in case you, um, you know, want to go check it out. But that'll wrap it up, and as always, go buy the ratch or go get a copy of it, you know. If you're wondering where I've been at, I've been working on... Um, content and stuff like that for Gumroad and other people that will soon to be re revealed in the future. So, um, you know, thank you all for watching, and I hope this tutorial was helpful. All right, before leaving off, um, I just want to talk for a minute about the grease pencil that's went through some enhancements as well in this latest version of Blender. So um, I saw a bunch of videos demonstrating it, and no one demonstrated it in its awesomeness. So, I mean... I just got a basic layer here, you know, opacity, um, you know, some fill, thick lines, and under grease pencil, I hit continuous drawing. And with this, I'm able to uh, basically uh, just sketch in real time in the viewport. And so, you know, with this, you can actually kind of storyboard and just think on the fly, you know, a lot quicker than, um, you know, before. Um, with these tools and the behavior that it has now reminds me of the shape brush and uh, alchemy and uh in Krita where you can just draw strokes and it'll fill in the shapes which is good for someone like me since I'm not really artistic uh in the sketching sense but you know we can just work with it so you know with something like this i just drew a bunch of strokes uh, you know, if I rotate, it breaks the illusion. But if I say I wanted to animate this, you can hold D and press tab, and that'll um, put you in um, edit mode of these strokes. And you can uh, select pieces and move down the timeline and turn on proportional editing and just move your strokes. And so I found this to be incredibly awesome. I've been playing with it uh, quite a bit over the last couple of days. In fact, um, I'll even uh, throw some goof-off examples in this uh, version. But, you know, just like that, I'm able to, um, you know, just animate this stuff in real time. And, I mean, it goes a lot deeper. I mean, you hold D and press W, you have these options. You press D and press Q, you have all these options. But... You know, instead of um, going through that, I just want to show some of the basics. So I just got the timeline, and I'm just clicking through the timeline, moving things. And, um, you know, one of the things I noticed is that I did have to press D, press tab to get out of edit mode, to um, be able to draw anything. And so, um, here I'll set a keyframe real quick. Now there's a keyframe. So now if I go in and draw, you know, I can uh, just have additional strokes here. And so, you know, this is especially cool as well because, you know, if we flip through it, you know, this is what we have. And so, you know, that pretty much wraps it up. I just wanted to do a real quick demonstration of uh, just some grease pencil stuff.